on today's lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to do radical expressions and rational exponents. Be excited. This is a three-part lesson. This is part one of three. What is the relationship between roots and exponents? So let's say you have the square root of 25, right? We all know that the answer to that is going to be 5 and negative five, but we'll just talk about principal roots for now, okay? So I know that that's the answer because five squared equals 25. So it takes two fives multiplied by each other to get me 25. So now when we talk about cube roots, okay? Notice that little three in the index of the cube root of eight. I need three numbers that when I multiply them by each other, they're gonna go ahead and give me an eight. That's gonna be two because two times two times two equals voila, an eight. So for this lesson, that's the skill that's gonna be like the root or the foundation of what we need to learn today. And just cause we're dealing with nth roots, it's important that you also know that if a radical doesn't have an index, so like that first radical, the radical 25, if it doesn't have an index, it's a square root. So there's an imaginary two there. If it's a square root, I don't bother to write it because it's the most common one that we use. So just like there's a little two there, I'm not gonna write it because I already know that there's a two supposed to be there. Let's talk about some vocabulary because vocabulary is important when you're learning a lesson because I'm gonna use these words and you wanna know what I'm talking about, right? So let's say I have the Q root of eight. Okay, that equals two, we just discussed that. So the little number, I call that the index, okay? The number, the eight, the orange eight, I'm gonna call that the radicand. So the number or whatever's inside of the radical, I call it the radicand. And then the answer to that is called a root. Now, I know that the opposite of that is two cubed. Two cubed, two is gonna be my base and the cube is gonna be my power or my exponent, okay? So types of roots. So I have certain indexes, they have a certain number of roots, and then I'm gonna give you an example so that you know what I'm talking about. So let's say we have an odd index. So that's gonna be what, a cube root, that's gonna be a fifth root, that's gonna be a seventh root, that's gonna be a ninth root, a 15th root, a 21st root. Anytime I have an odd index, there's one answer to that problem, one real root, okay? So let's look at some examples. If I have the cube root of eight, the answer is two. Not two and negative two, just two. If I have the cube root of negative 27, the answer is negative three. Not positive three, just negative three, because negative three times negative three times negative three equals a 27. Let's say I have an even index and a positive radicand. So the number inside of the radical is positive and the index is even. So square roots, fourth roots, sixth roots, eighth roots, stuff like that. I'm gonna have two real roots, okay? A positive root is called the principal. So we talk about that. When I say the square root of 25 and the answer is five, we know that the answer is also negative five, but the principal root is gonna be the positive answer. Examples, the fourth root of 16 is two or it is negative two. Both apply because when I do two times two times two times two, I'm gonna get positive 16. When I do negative two, negative two, negative two, negative two, I'm gonna go ahead and still get a positive 16 because all of those negatives cancel each other out. If I have an even index and a negative radicand, even index, negative radicand. Okay, so that means the number inside of the radical is going to be a negative number. I have zero real roots. We cannot do that. If I ask you what the square root of negative four is, like you cannot give me that answer because there's no two exact same numbers multiplied that's going to give me a negative four. So the fourth root of negative 16 does not exist. So I'm just going to say there's no answer. Even or odd index, but the radicand is zero. So basically the root of zero, the second root of zero, third root of zero, fourth root of zero, fifth root of zero, sixth root of zero, the nth root of zero is always gonna have one root and that one answer is always going to be zero. Q 
Cube root of zero equals zero. Sixteenth root of zero equals zero. Okay, so let's find all the roots. So if I have the sixth root of 64, right? First of all, I need to decide how many solutions am I gonna get to this problem? How many roots are there, right? So it's an even index and a positive number. Remember, an even index and a positive number have two real roots. So that's actually gonna be two and negative two because four twos multiplied by each other equals 64. Four negative twos multiplied by each other gives me positive 64 also. And I know that because two to the sixth power equals 64 and negative two to the sixth power equals 64. Notice those parentheses. Okay, so let's say I have the cube root of negative 216. So the cube root of negative 216 um, is going to be an odd index with a negative number. So an odd index always gives me one real root, no matter what kind of number is under the radical. And that number is going to be a negative 6. And I know that because negative 6 multiplied by itself three times is going to give me negative 216. I can't use a positive 6 because a positive 6 would give me a positive 216. Let's talk about the fourth root of negative 1024, negative 1024. Remember, this is an even root with a negative number inside of it. And anytime you have an, an even root with a negative number inside of it, you have zero real roots. So there's going to be no root to this problem. I have the fourth root of negative 256. Again, it's again going to be an even root with a negative number under it. And when that happens, you're always going to have zero roots. What about the sixth root? But it's a positive number. With a sixth root with a positive number under it, I have two real solutions, two real roots. I have a one and a negative one. 1 to the 6th power equals 64, and negative 1 to the 6th power equals 64. What about the cube root of 125? The cube root of 125, that's going to be an odd root, positive number. Doesn't matter what the number is because it's an odd root. One real solution every single time. In this case, that's going to be a 5. And I know that because 5 cubed equals 125. Right now, we're going to go over the product property, okay? And the product property says if the nth root of n and the nth root of b are real numbers, then I can say that the nth root of a times b, Ms. Brunat, Ms. B, please put this in regular people terms. I got you. If the index is the same, you can multiply the radicands. That's basically what it's saying. If those little numbers on the outside of the radical are the same, then I can combine both of the numbers under the radical by multiplication. Okay? So let's say I have the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 2. Both of them are cube roots, so I can multiply the 8 times the 2. And that's going to give me 16. Now, I'm going to throw you for a loop here, but I need you to stay with me, okay? We know that the cube root of 8 is equal to 2. So instead of multiplying those two things, I could just simplify the cube root of 8 to be a 2 and leave the cube root of 2 alone. So those are equivalent expressions. And actually that last one that I popped up on the screen is the one that you want to use because it's the most simplified version. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's talk about simplifying the radical expression. So I have the square root of 5 times the square root of 7. So both of those are square roots. Because they're both squares, I can say 5 times 7. And I could say that that equals the square root of 35. 
Now let's move on to number two. Number two says the cube root of six times the square root of two. Now I have a cube root times a square root. I cannot do that. That is not possible. Okay. And then number three, I have the cube root of negative four and the cube root of two. When I have both of them as the same root, both cube roots, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to multiply negative four times negative two. And that's going to go ahead and give me negative eight. And we know that I have a cube root and cube roots have one real solution. What's that one real solution? Negative two. So I would simplify that further because I can. The square root of 35, I can't simplify, so I'm gonna leave it alone. But the cube root of negative eight, I can, and that's a negative two. So that's why I went further on that problem. Simplify the radical expression, the cube root of 24. So if you know how to simplify square roots, simplifying nth roots will be easy for you. So I'm gonna break apart 24 into two factors. Give me two numbers that multiply to give you 24. I'm gonna choose eight times three. So when I have the eight times the three, I'm gonna break apart the eight. Four times two times three. The four can still be broken apart into two times two and bring down the two times three. So this is what we call the prime factorization. So the prime factorization, I'm looking for groups of three because it's a cube root and there's a three for that index. So the cube root um, looks for groups of three and I'm gonna look and find that I have three twos. So everything that gets circled comes to the outside. Everything that's not circled stays inside. So my answer is gonna be two cube root of three. Let's say I have the fourth root of 81, x to the 12th. I'm gonna break apart 81 into, to be its prime factorization and I'm gonna break apart that x to the 12th. So right now I have nine times nine and then 12 x's. I'm gonna break apart the nines into three times three. Still got 12 x's. So now I'm gonna make my groups of Four, because I'm dealing with a fourth root right now. So I'm gonna circle my threes because I have four threes. Circle four X's, another four X's, and boom, another four X's. So everything is getting circled. When everything is getting circled, that means everything comes out. Nothing is left in the radical. There's no more radical if everything is circled. So I'm gonna take one three, and one X for each of those circles. So my final answer is gonna be three X cubed. No radical, because nothing is left under there. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Nothing. Okay. I have the fourth root of 16 X to the fourth. Again, I'm gonna break apart 16 into B, eight times two. You could have done four times four. You still get the same answer, because when I break that apart, and then break it apart again, I'm gonna get two times two times two, and then four X's. We're making groups of four because it's a, a radical four, or it's a fourth root. So everything gets circled. What happens when everything gets circled? Nothing is left under the radical. There's no more radical. Two X is my final answer. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take a break right now, okay? I want you to practice some of those problems on your own. Rewrite them on a separate sheet of paper. See if you can do them without help. See if you could get the same answers without looking at the paper, okay? And then come back for part two.